All right, this is exciting. This actually never happens, but I get so many questions from you guys asking for more real-time chart analysis stuff. And right now, we're in the studio recording and these turtles, what are they called? Moon turtles are absolutely going off. Uh, it was a DJ mint, it was a stealth mint. I'm gonna jump into NFT nerds. I'm going to analyze the charts in real time and talk about how I would play this. Um, and hopefully you guys get a lot out of it. So let's get into it. So I've spoken a lot about NFT nerds in the past. It's a software tool that I personally love using. But in saying that, there are so many other tools out there. Uh, a lot of kind of newbies or people with really small bank balances or really small liquidity uh, in their wallets have asked, is it worth me getting NFT nerds? Because NFT nerds is quite expensive. I think it's like 0.5 or 0.6 for six months. And my answer is always the same. It's like if, if you only have 0.6 or you only have one ETH, um, you know, I never wanted to contribute like 50 to 70% of my bank balance to one NFT when I was just starting out. And the same thing kind of applies here. NFT News is a great tool, but it is an advanced tool. And yeah, if you're just starting out and you're basically using all of your liquid to just use this, uh, it can be counterproductive. And in saying that, it's actually not a token as well. So you can't actually sell it on a marketplace. There's alternatives uh, like Alpha Sharks, uh, Conian, um, Compass, all of these ones I actually haven't used in a while, so I'm not sure about the quality so far, but they are actually tokens on marketplaces. So you can buy the token, use the tool, and if you don't like it, then resell the token and hopefully not take too much of a hit. Whereas with something like NFT Nerds, it's a subscription fee. So buying it, you're kind of in, in it for the long run. You know, Once you buy it, you can't get that liquidity back. So that's a really important caveat that no one really talks about and I think is really, really important to know. But in saying that, I can show you this NFT Nerds dashboard for this current stealth mint, these moon turtles, and I can talk about really, realistically the principles around why things are going up, why things might go down, where I can see these going. You know, we also had like a recent mint that absolutely flew the moon runners. Um, I think they hit like 0.8 or nearly 1 ETH. And so it's a question on everyone's mind. This was a free mint that happened like an hour and a half ago. Um, I saw it minting for free as I jumped in the car to come here. Um, so I couldn't actually mint any. And then by the time we've set up the laptop uh, and I've had my coffee, obviously I had to get our coffee before we, we, we film. We do this every time. <laughs> um, yeah, they're already at 0.07 or 0.08 now if we look. And so there's a free mint. They started pretty much basically at 0.02 um, and now they're at 0.08. So the question is, will these run? Will these run to 0.2? Will these run to 0.5? Will these run to 1 ETH? The question is, like the thing is about this, we don't actually know, but we can look at the data, we can look at the metrics and we can try and make like small predictions and then make informed decisions on there. So let's jump into it. As you can see on the left here, we have all the live listings and you can sort by price, you can sort by rank, you can sort by date. Um, if we sort by date, you can see like all of them are coming up, like all different prices. This is what people usually see in OpenSea. So if you're tracking listings in OpenSea, this is why it can be really hard if you're just focusing on OpenSea data to make buy or sell decisions because, you know, listings for 0.14, listings for 0.16, listings at floor, you don't really know how much the listings are affecting the floor price unless you rank by price, all right? So now we're ranking by price and as you can see, We've got a lot of buys here close to the floor. We're at 0.08 now, but we're actually a really thin floor to 0.089. Um, and then we can see the listing chart over here on the right-hand side. So the listing charts, I think, are just so essential when it comes to buying and selling NFTs. If, for example, I had five or 10 in my wallet of this Stealth Mint, I'd be looking at this, this listing chart and go, hang on, well, there is 103, 178, listed 188 listed at 0.1. So we need a lot of sales to crack that kind of 0.1 wall. And um, this is what's called a listing wall uh, when we talk about price targets and, and uh, NFTs trying to break through that. As you can see, if we want to try and create the kind of moon runners effect and get to that 0.5, we need about 800 to 900 sales, which at the end of the day, it's actually not that much, um, but we do need significant volume to get there. Now volume, how do we look at volume? Like volume is over here underneath this 
um, real-time sales chart. You can see I always like to list by one minute. And the reason why I do that is because that's the data I'm used to seeing. So there's no right or wrong way to look at this, but I know that if I list by 30 minutes, that doesn't really tell me much personally because I'm not used to looking at this data. So I'm looking at like the previous 30 minutes, 800 sales, the 30 minutes before that, 1,000 sales. What does that mean? I don't really understand what that means. I don't know if that's good. I don't know if that's bad. Whereas if I look at one minute data and I look at the last couple of minutes here, there was 23 sales there, 25 sales there. There was a bit of a drop off here with 12. There was 26 here. What's the next? 25 there. All right, so I'm looking at that and going, okay, in the last five, six minutes, we're pretty consistently at this 25 sales mark. Now, from my experience and doing a lot of these stealth mints over the last six to nine months, 25 sales a minute is actually pretty good volume. And it's pretty rare to see something like this happen um, consistently. And as you can see on this um, volume chart, like it's stayed pretty consistent for the last two hours. So it's no surprise it's ran from you know 0.03 down here all the way up to 0.08 now um, because the volume stays are consistent. But in saying that, we don't know where it's gonna run from here, okay? So just because the volume's been consistent, just because it's volume that personally I haven't seen too often, that doesn't mean that it's automatically going to run, okay? And this is where we need to ask the next question. It's like, well, okay, it's had volume until now. It looks like there's a plenty of genie sweeps happening. So people are sweeping the floor. That's where you can see these gem sales or genie or gem, it's two different platforms, but they achieve the same thing. It's when people want to sweep the floor and sweep multiple NFTs all at once instead of trying to buy individually. And that's usually a bullish shine as well. But we want to see, all right, this point one wall, or this point one, two, one, four, really to 0.16, that's, that's the most significant wall. If we can crack that, so we need 430 sales, that's when we know it'll be much more likely to run, okay? So I can, we can go over to this threshold tab over here, type in 0.16, and as you can see, we've got the purple sales on the top here, and then we've got the green and red sales uh, listings below here, all right? So green is new listings, red is lowered listings, so people that are bricking the floor, that are panicking. Obviously, the more red on this chart, the more scary it is because it's more people are just trying to get out. And usually that's not a good thing if you're trying to get the floor price to go up. Um, but what we really want to see is more purple than green and red and, and see that ratio change. As you can see, there's like a little yellow line here that dictates kind of what direction the trend is moving to this 0.16. And as you can see, it's kind of getting closer to that uh, x-axis, which is, which is a bullish sign. But again, we just need to watch this. And even in the time that we've been watching it, as I said, it was a pretty thin floor to... 0.089, we're, right there, we're there already, all right? So the other things that I would look at during this time, if I'm trying to make a call of whether I want to buy in right now, um, I wanna look at the listing history tab over here. And as you can see, uh, we've, about an hour ago, we were about 800 listings or 700 listings until that 0.16. And why did I type in 0.16? Because that that's basically the most significant wall there that's going to stop this from running, okay? So that's the biggest hurdle that we have to get over. As you can see, it's a really steep ladder here, but then once we get to, yeah, that 0.3 or 0.25, it thins out and the wall and the listings really thin out, the floor really thins out um, and that, that gives it the potential of running. But we can see that just in the last hour, we were at that, that 700, 800 mark listings until 0.16, whereas now we're right down, we've halved, okay? So we're about 400. So again, really bull, bullish sign. But am I confident enough to buy in now? No, personally, I'm not confident enough, but I am very conservative um, when it comes to chasing pumps and um, volume and swing trades on secondary. Um, it's just not my style. Like I only like to do it when I feel really, really confident and have basically no risk around losing money. Uh, whereas I know a lot of my friends that are much more uh, or much less risk averse and they'll be happy to sweep, sweep some here and then walk away and come back hopefully in 12 hours and see that the floor is up. What I would prefer to do is sit here basically for the next two hours um, and do some work and then on my second screen, have this open and just, just keep an eye on everything that's going on here. Keep an eye on this particular chart, which is the listings um, 2.16 and see if that line keeps tracking downwards, okay? If it starts tracking back up, then we know the likelihood of this 0.16 wall breaking uh, is gonna be much less, okay? And then also using this particular chart here, making sure that the volume is staying steady, making sure we're keeping up that 25 to 30 sales per minute, 
um, which is what we want to see. And if all of a sudden the volume changes, which it can happen, like this can go from 20 to 50 sales, maybe we get some influencers on Twitter shilling them, maybe we get some really famous wallets just sweeping the floor and everyone's got those bots and trackers set up. Um, and yeah, people can see that the floor is getting swept by these whales. That's when I could see the volume changing. And that's the kind of thing that I would look for before aping in personally, all right? So obviously this isn't financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Um, you know, I've used these metrics and used NFT nerds and made plays before and still lost money, okay? So it's definitely not like a, this always works every time kind of, kind of thing. I'm trying to give you an insight in, around how I look at charts and how I look at analysis. Um, and this is what I've learned from really smart traders, like traders that are way smarter than me. Um, you know, I'm going to talk about the NFT Expert Summit, obviously, but um, the NFT Expert Summit is bringing in traders that have taught me this stuff, guys that have um, talked about really and showed me really amazing things around how to make money with swing trading. And they're going to share their tech techniques and tips, which are much better than my techniques, um, in the NFT Expert Summit. And anyone who attends that event and has that um, mint pass is going to learn from them. This is really cool, like a rank 57 has just sold for 0.6. So that's an, that can be another bullish sign. If we click on this outliers tab on the right hand side, we can see all the big rare buyers up here, which is a sign the more we've got up here, the more bullish we are about the collection as a whole because whales and smart buyers will come in and buy up the rare ones. We can see rank one sold for two ETH about an hour ago. <laughs> that's a squirt or squad one, that's actually pretty cool. Um, so that, that sold for two ETH on a DGEN mint like this. So yeah, that's pretty bullish that something like that is happening. Um, but I would like to see some more of these kind of heavy buyers above the floor. Um, and I'd like to see, yeah, some more sweeps. I'd like to see this listing wall go down and continue tracking down. I don't want to see this yellow line start tracking back up again. Um, or even I don't really want to see just like, um, yeah, like these volume counts of 20-ish just stay steady or drop slightly because as we can see, the listings are like constantly coming in. Like look at all this red and yellow. So red is listings in the last 10 seconds. Yellow is listings in the last 20 seconds. Um, you know, there's going to be listings nonstop because there's going to be people that bought down here or minted and minted a lot, like 10 to 20. As you can see, there's 8,000 supply here and 3,900 holders, which actually in saying that as well, that's a pretty good ratio. Um, far out, I'm really selling these, <laughs> these turtles. There's a, lot, there's a lot of bullish things about them. Things I don't like about them is like they're clearly another derivative. Like it's just the Moonbirds art been flipped um, and then turned into turtles instead of owls. Um, but they've got all the different Moonbirds traits, which is pretty cool. Uh, obviously, I'm a big fan of the Moonbirds. And so that can be bullish in itself. Like a lot of Moonbirds people could be seeing these and going, Oh, you know what? I actually really like these because I love the Moonbirds. They share all the same traits. So this is exciting. Um, but yeah, looking at the floor now, we're at 0.09. That's the other thing that I like about NFT nerds is it's a real-time floor. So the floor actually gets adjusted in real time, like to the second. Um, whereas as we know, OpenSea floor <laughs> metrics is just always wrong. Um, so that's, that's interesting to note. Another thing to note is the 10% royalty, all right? So a lot of DGEN mints might have only like 2.5% royalty or 5% royalty. This is, this is a big amount, right? 10% royalty. So to put this in perspective, if we're gonna buy at around this 0.09 mark here, and this might look awkward because I'm about to do math on camera. Um, but if we buy at this 0.09 mark, um, if, if it hits 0.16, um, we're paying 10% royalty straight away, or 0.15, we're paying 10% royalty straight away um, on that sale. So really at 0.15, we're only getting back 0.135. Um, and then the gas required to pay, to buy something for 0.09, I mean, gas is 50 at the moment, so it's not too bad, but you're essentially paying about 0.1, maybe 0.15. So if you take that into account, even if we hit like this 0.15 wall, um, which is quite a significant jump from where we are here. It's nearly a, a 2x jump. We haven't 2x our profits. And that's what's really surprising to a lot of people and a lot of people don't take into account. Because yeah, if we sell at 0.15, minus 10% royalty, um, you gotta take 0.015 off that. So 0.135, um, you know, realistically, you're profiting 0 0.03 or 0 0.025 per um, turtle that you actually buy and sell. So that's a lot of risk for me. I'm, I'm looking at that and going, 
okay, there's a big risk that this doesn't go up. This actually just flatlines and then goes back down. And the upside to it right now is even if it hits 0.15, I'm only actually going to profit 0.02 or 0.03 per turtle. <laughs> that makes me go, is that risk really worth it? And for me, the answer is no. A lot of other people will be like, yeah, hell yeah, let's do it. Let's sweep the floor. Let's get 20 of these turtles and then bank 0.02 profit uh, for each and make 0.4. I mean, people can try and do that. As I said, these could run to like 0.05, uh, 0.5 or, or 1 ETH, but I don't know if they will yet. And I don't have enough confidence in the charts yet to make that call. So I'd much prefer just to sit and, and, and watch and just relax. As we can see, the floor, it did hit 0.09 before. We're back at 0 0.087. We're getting a few relistings here. If we have a look at this momentum chart, ignore this like uh, yellow bit right at the end here, but that's because the data hasn't uploaded yet. Um, we're, in, we're in this exact minute here, so we don't have the full listings metrics, but you can see that this yellow line actually has tracked further downwards, which isn't a good sign. It basically means that there's more listings and relistings coming through than there are sales. We looks like OpenSea, might have been OpenSea, but something rugged these turtles and we had two different minutes here of no sales, which is not great. You can see it here. We had 24 sales here, then no sales here, then three sales here, then no sales here. So we don't know whether that was OpenSea rugging us or whether just the momentum completely fell down. But compared to when we started this video, where we had pretty good volume here, we've actually got a lot less volume now, all right? And so that's a bad sign. That means that unless we see um, something change, the floor could start bricking and start going down quite heavily. But in saying that, this is what um, a lot of whales and a lot of gem sweepers or genie sweepers could be waiting for. And um, they're watching this right now. They're maybe making similar calls to myself. They're maybe telling themselves similar things. They see this volume start to reduce and maybe the floor start to bricking. We want to see people maybe undercutting and start to panic. And everyone just sits and waits. And then if it does brick down to 0.06 or 0.05 and the volume does slow down, what I've seen time and time again is then that's when all the whales come in and go bang. And they all start genie sweeping. They all start um, going hard. And there's this volume chart just goes bananas again. So instead of having this downward trend that we had have been have, having the last 30 minutes, all of a sudden we see a massive uptrend, okay? And so I'm not gonna sit here for the next two hours and look at this chart on this video. Um, I'm definitely gonna have it in the background and watch it, um, but I could see something like that happening maybe like 15, 30, 40 minutes from now, where the volume kind of steadies, it kind of like tapers off a little bit and everyone kind of thinks that they're done. A lot of people start undercutting and start to try and get out, and then that's when we see some big wallets coming in and start sweeping. And when that happens, again, that completely changes um, our viewpoint around what's possible with this. So I think that's the biggest lesson I want you guys to take away is that the, the charts and the data will change in real time. Um, don't look at these charts and don't look at the data and go, okay, this is what's going to happen because we don't know that. What we can do is we can use the darts, and the, the, darts the charts and the data to make informed decisions and then weigh up the risk versus reward weigh up your personal situation and then make a call from there and then be willing to change our mind in like 20 minutes or willing to change our mind in 30 minutes. I spoke about this before, but the worst thing that you can do is like be emotional about this collection. Like I just, as, as much as I can, I want to make a, like a call on the artwork with regards to it is high quality. You know, I talked about the Moonbirds holders might enjoy this art because it shares some similarities and the derivative traits are actually pretty well done. But in saying that, if you personally hate the art, if you hate turtles, if you hate Pokemon, if you hate Squirtles or whatever, don't let that impact you. You know, just because you hate it doesn't mean the market hates it. And so that's the worst thing you can do is like go into this thinking like, okay, well, I think the art's crap, so therefore it's not going to go well. Or I think the art's amazing, so therefore I think it will go well. That's the worst kind of thinking that you can do around this. The smarter way to go about it is like, okay, okay this is what the art is. How do I think people will... Um, reflect on this art? How do I think people will judge this? Because they're the ones that make the, the decision cumulatively, not just you. So that's really important. Don't, don't let that um, dictate your judgment. Don't let uh, your own personal biases dictate how you read the charts. Um, and that's imp incredibly hard to do, but um, I de definitely try and do it as best I can. Just try and look, look at this with as, as objective opinion as possible and really just try and make sure that, yeah, I'm, 
I'm viewing the data for what it is and making informed decisions from there. So we're back at 0.08. As you can see, um, you know, someone's, oh, someone's buying it right now, which is um, good to know. And then we've got 0.085. So we're hovering around this 0.08 to 0.09 mark for a while now. And as you can see, the sales in the last five minutes haven't been great. You know, we're at 11, 12, 11, 13, haven't been great. I mean, that's pretty good, but for a 10,000 collection, um, we need a lot more than that, I think, for these to really run. So yeah, I hope that this has been really valuable for you. As I said, NFT nerds isn't the only option with this. Um, in saying that, anyone who attends the NFT Expert Summit gets a 40% discount on NFT nerds. I'm really excited for that. I chatted to the NFT nerds guys and they were able to yeah, get a discount for everyone. So anyone who holds the NFT Expert Summit NFT when we, are, when we mint in early July, will get a 40% discount on these uh, lifetime subscription passes for um, NFT nerds, which is which is really awesome. So thanks to the NFT nerds guys out there. But in saying that, like I'm you know not paid by NFT nerds to promote them. Like there's so many other tools out there. As I said, there is a big downside with NFT nerds is that it's not um, a token. You can't trade it on a marketplace. Um, so yeah, if you are struggling with liquidity, maybe explore some other options. Um, like I said, but. This has been really interesting um, and I'm really glad we caught this in real time and I hope you've like learned a lot from it. Um, we actually might, let's check out the actual Moon Runners. Um, moon Runners official, here we go. Let's see where, where they are. All right, so they're at 0.62. Um, what are we gonna look at? Let's look at the summary. All right. So as we can see, we started off pretty low um, and then we had like these small little pumps. As you can see, you can see, it's very small, but you can see the volume charts really start to increase and we get these little mountains and that's obviously when the price goes up and then the mountains drop off and the price goes down. Um, so this is what people talk about with volume. And then we get something like this, which is like the Mount Everest. Look at it. <laughs> it's just like towers above everybody else. And that's when you see the real the real price changes happen. So before this little mountain happened, where were we? We were at 0.3, yeah, through here. Yeah, and then as you can see, it hit 0.58. Um, so that's a much more, that's a, for me, I'm much more comf comfortable going into something like that than these turtles that we were just talking about. So I didn't actually didn't get these. Um, this obviously happened, you know, what time is this for me? 3 a.m. <laughs> so I, did, I wasn't awake for this, but if I was watching the charts here and I saw this kind of increase in volume and I would have been able to use the NFT tools, NFT nerds tools to see all this, I would have been like, okay, I'm much more comfortable aping in here at 0.3 and maybe sweeping a couple because, let's look at actually the royalty as well. Oh, it's 10% royalty as well, but... Um, yeah, I would have been much more comfortable going in there knowing that we could have reached 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Much more comfortable for me, uh, less risk, even though the price is more expensive. Um, and then likewise over here, where are we? We are around 0 0.5 here. And as you can see, there's another couple of little mountains here and we run, geez, all the way up to 0 0.9. Pretty impressive. Um, I think for me personally, I know my risk tolerance. I wouldn't have been able to hold <laughs> to this long. I would have definitely sold the majority of mine here and been happy happy with that. Or maybe kept one and then see where it, where it went here. But as you can see, it's after that kind of blow off top, we are reducing a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see if we get any volume pumps from here. Um, I know moon runners have some interesting stuff with full moons and that sort of thing. But again, I'd have to look and watch the data and to see what happens like listings listings wise. Let's type in to one ETH and see how far away we are from one ETH. Yeah, we're not too bad, we're like 600 away. Um, so yeah, that's interesting. We'll see how, We'll see how they run. Um, but at the moment, it's definitely the turtles that are taking all the volume. So can turtles do a moon runners? I'm not that confident, um, but we will see. Um, I actually don't know anything about the Turtles project and the roadmap. Do they have like the full moon thing that moon runners have that everyone was getting really excited about? No idea. I'm just looking at the actual raw data with the Turtles. Um, and at the moment, my conclusion is there's not enough there for me to have confidence in opening in right now, but I am definitely going to keep watching it. I'm definitely going to keep an eye on these charts. I think if they can break that 0.1516 wall, then they can really start running. Um, 
so we'll see what happens. But if you've enjoyed this, please comment. Please tell me below if you're interested in more of these real-time um, chart analysis, analysis videos. As I said, I'm not an expert on this. I learned this from other experts and guys that have taught me how to do this and guys that have made way more money than me around doing this. And that's why I've brought them in to speak at the NFT Expert Summit, which as always, there's a Google form below this video. Fill that out. There's still chances to get whitelist. I just randomly select people from, for whitelist for that video. Um, but fill out the Google form below, comment below um, this YouTube video, informing me whether this video sucked and wasn't helpful or whether it was really helpful and you want me to do more of them. Or if you prefer me to go back and do um, the more kind of, self-analysis videos as well. Like I'm just here to help you guys. So anything that I can do to help, um, just let me know. But I think we're gonna wrap that up now. How long have we been going for, Pete? <laughs> All right, well, it's a long video. <laughs> um, so again, let us know. But that's all for now. Um, all that's left to do now is, yeah, make sure you like, subscribe, the notifications on, comment below, and make sure you follow me on Twitter at LiamDNFT. See you next time.